Why do you say that her position is increasingly untenable, Steve? Uh, well, because she's clearly lost the confidence of a large part of the British public. She's lost the confidence of a large member, uh, number of members of Parliament. And the, all that we've seen over the last few weeks of the U-turns and the instability that's been there has created this environment where people are asking if she is the right person to lead our country at this time. Yeah, I think the phrase used, she's in the last chance saloon. She will have to stand down quite soon. Um, have you revised your uh, view on that, bearing in mind she seemed to have uh, survived at least PMQs today? Well, I, I mean, absolutely. The, 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 the key to PMQs every week is survival. Um, it, it, it's, uh, you know, a test for a prime minister facing the leader of the opposition and backbenchers. She did perfectly OK uh, today. Uh, but that's, you know, fairly safe territory. It should be for any prime minister. What I think we need her uh, to see her do now is really connect with the British public. If, if she's got a message for the British public to inspire them that she is the right person to lead our country through what are going to be some incredibly challenging months ahead, um, then that's where the message needs to land. Are you a bit of a lone voice? There's, you can count on sort of one hand the number of Conservative MPs who have publicly uh, spoken out. What are colleagues saying to you in private? And why aren't they speaking out if she's in such a, a tricky position? Well, I mean, individual MPs need to answer for themselves. Um, I've been quite clear since quite early on that the mini budget was um, a bit of a disaster. It contained a number of things that were clearly not the right policies uh, at this point in time for our country. I'm delighted that, uh, uh, that Jeremy Hunt has come in and, and, uh, uh, and reversed the vast majority of that and provided a bit of stability and leadership we need. So I think some of that has calmed the concerns of some people. Uh, but as I've said, what we need to hear from is the Prime Minister. We need to know what her policies are now and that she has what it takes for the job. And tell us, Steve, what are your voters saying to you down there in the southwest? Of course, very reliant on seasonal um, money coming in for, for Newquay particularly and, and uh, a lot of poverty elsewhere in, in the rural areas and so on. Um, what are people saying as, as they face the winter and, of course, the fact that they now know that the help on energy bills will only last until the spring? Well, I think they're really worried, and understandably so. They see uh, prices going up uh, far quicker than most of us have ever seen, in, in, in certainly in our adult lives. Um, obviously, uh, the, the confirmation from the Prime Minister today from the dispatch box that she's going to stick with the triple lock uh, is very welcome news for pensioners, who I have many uh, of in my constituency. But they really want to know that there is a government in place that has a grip of the situation and has the answers to the challenges that we are going to be facing going forward. They're obviously concerned about their mortgage payments uh, going up and, and, as you say, uh, what happens beyond September with the uh, support for, for energy bills. So there are a number of really big questions and, and what we need to know is that the, 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 the number 10 and number 11, that the Prime Minister and the Chancellor are in lockstep on this, that they're together in terms of what the policy should be going forward and we need to hear them from the Prime Minister to provide the, the reassurance that my constituents and people around the country need. How long has she got? Well, I've said I, I think she's got a very short window. I mean, I, I, I think the, the, the fiscal statement on the 31st of October is going to be a key moment, and we see what the reaction to that is, both from the markets but also uh, from the public, if the public uh, are, are reassured and, 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 and confidence is restored at that point. I think that's going to be a very key moment. And, of course, the suggestion is if there is another change of leadership, uh, a coronation, there will be increasing demands then for uh, a general election. Lots of MPs worried about what that will mean for themselves. I mean, how would your position be down there in, in Cornwall? Well, I think the latest polls are not, are not good news for any of us, are they? Uh, you know, I think it, it predicts that I'll narrowly lose my seat. But uh, I, I think, uh, you know, that clearly always sharpens uh, the mind of MPs. But, you know, it isn't just about me or any other MP as an individual. This is about the future of our country. And what we don't want to see is a Labour government. As Conservatives, we, you know, we, we believe that we have the, the right answers and the policies to, to take the country forward and, and return us to better times. That's what we need to be working for. Uh, our, my personal view is if we get back to the manifesto that we were elected on 
in 2019 and start to deliver that uh, again, uh, rather than the distraction we've had in the last few weeks, then we don't need a general election because we continue the work uh, that we were elected to, to, to deliver. And, and I think that is what is important right now.